Hello world, I'm Alan. And in this video, we're gonna add ID labels to our bots so we can tell them apart. We're gonna to touch on some advanced topics about how computers can treat numbers and words differently. Those details take a decent amount of explaining and would be a little bit too much for this video. I made another video that explains how all that works and linked it below. Check it out when you're ready to delve deeper. For now, it's enough to know that the difference exists and we'll set up a way to deal with it. We don't end up with a lot of code in this one. The TLDR is to add this line of code to the bot startup.lua file to get the label. But keep watching if you want the full details. I've only got three bots right now, but I've got plans for a lot more. Each bot has an internal ID that corresponds to the folder that stores its program files. Having a label above the bot that shows the ID will make it a lot easier to keep things straight. I'm gonna add that label with a command in each bot's startup.lua file. Most of my bots already have a startup.lua file that were added in previous videos that are linked below. To make it easier to follow along, I'm gonna start with this fresh bot and show the process from start to finish. Inside our new bot, I'll type the lua command to start what's called the interactive lua prompt. This is a place where I can run the same commands we would normally put inside a program, but without having to actually put them in a file to see them. The command I'm gonna run is os.getComputerID. It prints out the bot's ID so we know which one we're working with. In this case, that's bot number three. Opening the ComputerCraft computers folder in Visual Studio Code, we see folders numbered zero, one, and two. Those are the folders for my previous bots, but I don't see number three in there yet. That's because the folder won't get created until we make at least one program inside the bot itself. So let's do that now. First, we'll need to exit the interactive Lua prompt. We'll do that by typing exit followed by a pair of parentheses. This brings us back to the normal view where we can type edit startup.lua to create our file. I'm gonna start by putting in a print hello world statement. Then I'm gonna tap the control key followed by S to save the file and then tap control again followed by E to exit it. Looking at Visual Studio Code, I see there's now a three folder and if I open it up, I see our startup.lua file. Startup.lua is a special file. Instead of having to run it ourselves, the bot runs it every time we reboot. For example, if I reboot the bot right now, I see the hello world message. The text on the terminal between craft OS 1.8 and hello world is what's known as the message of the day. It changes every time we reboot and it's a little distracting. So we're gonna get rid of it with these lines we came up with in the last video, which is also linked below. We need to reboot the bot twice for these commands to take effect. When we do, the message goes away and we see a new settings file show up in the three folder inside Visual Studio Code. That file tells the bot to turn off the message. It won't mess with us so we can safely ignore it. Now we can use the startup.lua file to set the label for our bot. First, I'm gonna close the left side list of folders and files in Visual Studio Code to get us some more room to see the file. With that out of the way, we'll start by adding an os.setComputerLabel statement with hello world in its parentheses. Back in Minecraft, we can reboot the bot and when we exit the terminal, we see our shiny new hello world label. Now we can use the same os.getComputerID command we ran in the interactive Lua prompt to put the bot's ID in the label. We'll start by replacing hello world with a command, but we're gonna run into a problem. When we reboot the bot, we get this scary looking message. This is an error message. And the first thing to say about it is that error messages are incredibly common when writing a program. Getting things right the first time can be really hard, but error messages are our friends. They don't tell us how to fix things, but they show us where things went wrong and help us figure out what to do next. Let's break this message down piece by piece. The message starts with slash startup.lua. That's the name of the file that has the problem. That makes sense since it's the file we were just editing. The next thing in the error message is the number six surrounded by colons. That number tells us which line in the program the error happened on. Looking over at Visual Studio Code, we see that line six is where we added the code to make our label. It's also the line that we just changed. The next thing in the message is bad argument number one, string expected got number. That can be a little hard to read since it wraps to a second line, but it's all one section of the error message. Arguments are what we call the stuff that we put in parentheses inside a program. For example, hello world was an argument. And even though OS get computer ID is its own command, it's also an argument because we put it inside the parentheses. So bad argument number one means the first argument has a problem, which in this case is our os.getComputerID. Looking at the last part of that section of the message, it says string expected got number. This starts to get into the more advanced part of how computers deal with things. In a lot of cases, they treat numbers a little differently than they treat words and letters. Explaining the specifics of those differences will take a while, 
but we don't have to know all the details right now to get things to work. So I've put the specifics in another video linked below. For now, it's enough to know two things. First, in the programming world, words and sentences are called strings. Second, some things you can do with strings, you can't do with numbers. For example, there are some places where we can use strings that we can't use numbers. And that's exactly our problem. Hence, the string expected got number part of the error message. And just to say it again, that may not make total sense yet, but it will in the other video, and we can move on for now without digging into it further. We need to get the bot to think of the ID as a string instead of a number. We'll deal with that in just a second, but let's finish looking at the error message first. The last part is gray, which just makes it a little easier to read. It starts with line six, which matches the six from earlier and telling us what line the problem is on. Next, it shows us the code from line six itself. Even more helpful is the fact that the parentheses after set computer label is underlined. That points us to the exact place where the problem occurred. Taking what we know from the first part of the error message, where a strand is expected but a number showed up, we know we need to update our code so that we can use the number as a string. The way to do that is by putting another string in front of the number. Let's use ID for our new string. Then we'll use these two dots to tell the bot to combine the string with the number. Doing so makes it all a string, which is how we get our number to convert into the string we need. When we reboot our bot now, we see the label above the bot with its ID string. And that's it. Now we can look at our bots running around in the world and know which one is which. That's gonna make it much easier to find its program files when we wanna edit them. In the next video, we'll make an update to the label so it shows us how much fuel the bot has. In the meantime, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And of course, be kind and take care, and we'll see you next time.